So, um, so we started learning Java two classes ago. The first day we learned the basics, right? We learned how to cre create variables. And we learned that in Java, the variable declarations are a little bit different from JavaScript. Remind me how they're different? Specified. Yeah, so yes and yes. So at a very basic level, when you create a variable, you have to say the kind of data that that variable will contain. Why do you have to say this? Exactly. So that the Java virtual machine, the thing that actually runs your Java code, knows how much memory to take in order to store that data. Okay? All right. What are some of the types that we've learned that variables can be? Ints, doubles, chars, floats, good, booleans, right? Okay. We also learned that they can be objects like strings or ones that we ourselves create. How do we create a new object? We use a class. So remember, a class is a template for, that is used to create or to construct an object, right? So you can't create an object without first having a class or a template that you can use to then make that object. We talked about that objects can have members and methods. What are methods? Functions. Good. So an object can have functions. It can also have members. What are members? Values. Yeah, like values, like variables, right? Like name, age, phone number. Those are members. Methods are things like get full name, right? That would be an example of a member. Finally, and at the very end, we talked about how if you want to store members or functions in the class, you declare them as static because you only have one instance of them. There is only one class. There is only one template. So static variables and methods belong to the class. So if you want to call them, you do the class name dot whatever. If it's not static, it, be, be, it is now... A, um, it now belongs to the object. So if you want to call, say, get full name, which is not static, you first have to create a new person and then do whatever that variable is dot get full name to get the full name of that person. Let's quickly review what we did in the previous class just to get everyone up to speed and then we'll move forward from there. So, I want to create a new object. What is the first thing I have to do in order to create a new object? Exactly, I need a class, good. So let me go ahead and make one. So let's come here, new uh, file. So let's call it, um, come on. let's call this file, um, I don't know, person, dot Java. Okay, now I need to make a class. I'm in the file person.java. This is person.java. Uh, now I need to make a class. What do I do? Good. This is the beginning of my class. This is the end of my class. This just says it's a class. This is the name of the class. This we'll talk about today. Don't worry about that for now. Okay, so now I want to add some members to my class. Give me an example of a member that I can add to my class. What else? Surname. Okay, so let's have this be first name, maybe F name. Let's have public string L name for last name or surname. Let's have age, public int age. Good, okay. Give me an example of a method that I might want to add. Okay, a get full name is the one we keep using, but sure, yeah, get full name. So public, what does that function return? What is full name? A string, good. Uh, what's the name of the function? Okay, and this will then return, 
let's say f name concatenate with an empty string, space that is, a concatenate with l name. Good. OK. Oh, oof, f name. Now remember that, remember this? Remember what this means. This refers to yourself. So in this case, when we ask this person, what is your name? It's going to say my first name plus my last name is my full name. You might wonder why use this? This actually works. Why do we have to use this? This was a question that was asked to me last time. Here's why. Suppose someone passes a parameter called A, and I have a member called A. Wait for it. If I say A, what am I referring to? This one. But yet, if I do this A, now what am I referring to? This one. Understand? So just to avoid confusion altogether, I recommend that whenever you refer to your members, just always do this. Whenever you want to refer to any of your members, do this dot whatever. Did that make sense to you? Good. Awesome. Loving it. OK, so now we've made this class. A class, remember, is just a template. It describes the structure of the objects you will later make. It says people will have, when they're created, a first name, a last name, an age, and a method called getFullName. That's what we have right now. Now let's actually use this to actually make people. OK, so uh, let's go back to what was the one we were working with, this one. So now let's do a new person. This will make a new person. Well, I want to store that into a variable, right? Like p. This is red. Why? Cannot resolve to a variable. Well, I need to make, I need to declare a variable called p. What is the type for p? Exactly. p is a, per, is it a number? No. Is it a boolean? No, it is a person. OK, so inside of p, I'm going to put people. Just like if I did this, int a, this means that inside of a, I'm going to put numbers. Here, inside of p, I'm going to put a person. Make sense? Good. So now I've created a, per a person, p. Now p, I can do dot get full name. Oh, oh, let me get rid of that a. Sorry, one sec. One sec. Did I just open everything? There we go. OK, let me get rid of this int a. That was just an example. Good. OK. So I can do get full name. What does this return? What, does, what is full name? Huh? Yeah, what is it? Is it a number? It's a string, good. A f a full name. Good, which I can now print system.out.println full name. Very good. What will I see if I run this now? No? Oh, hang on. There. Null concatenated with null. Why? Right. Remember, whenever you have variables, if you don't put anything into the variable, the value of that variable is null. And what we did in get full name is we attached first name, which was null, with a space, and then last name, which was null. OK, how can I change that? I want first name and last name to be Bogos, Bogosian, no, whatever. What do I do? P. P dot f name is now Bogos and p dot l name is now Pet Petrosian. Okay, fine. Petrosian. Good. Okay, now if I save this and run, I get Bogos Petrosian. Bye bye. Yay. The second, you mean person? Yeah, person is a separate file, see? Person.java. I'll tell you. So right now, the reason why I don't have to do anything, I can just use it, 
is because they're both in the same directory. If they're in different directories, we're actually going to talk about that. We have one more thing, and then we'll talk about that. OK, so we're getting there. OK, so does everyone understand that we can, using classes, construct objects? And that objects have members and methods? Is this part, is, does anyone confused? Raise your hand if you're confused with that much. OK, good, very good. OK, so let's keep going. So uh, we mentioned methods, right? Let's write a method, public um, int add, that takes two integers, int a and int b. You missed i, you missed public. Ah, thank you. And it returns a plus b. OK, so this is a function I made that takes two integers and returns the sum of the two integers. This is obvious, right? Simple. Suppose I also wanted to support the addition of doubles. What I can do is make another method, add. Notice it has the same exact name. And yet, the fact that I've changed. For example, if you write public int multiple, and then write your name plus b, what do we do? If, if I do what? Just change the name, you mean? No, the name is a very. OK, so I have two things with the same exact names. Good? OK, they take variables with the same exact names. The point to take away from this is as follows. Notice that both notice that both of the functions have the same exact names. Can you use this text for integer? Huh? Can you use something like this for integer? Something like what for an integer? It's just a variable name, dude. Call it Boros. It's what you put into it that matters. You have a variable. It has a name. Yeah, you can call any variable can have any name. As long as it's it's legal legal name, it doesn't start with number and stuff like that. Okay, good. Okay, so there's a name for this. Whenever you have the same name but you have different behavior based on input, that's called method overloading. Remember that method overloading. So you're taking the same. You can think of it as the same method. It has the same name. But depending on the kinds of values you call it with, if you call it with integers, you're going to get this. If you call it with doubles, you're going to get this. Right? So depending on what you give it, it's going to call a different version of itself. Does that make sense? Is it wrong or is it right? No, method overloading is perfectly OK. Perfect. You can also change the number of arguments. So you can have a method that takes two integers. And then you can have another method that takes three integers and adds them. So if you call the one with the two, you'll get the first one. If you call the one with the three, you get the second one, for example. OK? So then when you use this, now let's take this, copy it, go back here. Let's do uh, p dot whatever. And now let's call it with a four and a five. Let's also do this and call it with a 4.5 and a 6.7. In this example, right, these two are integers, so they'll, get, they'll go to the first one. These two are doubles, so they'll go to the second one. What will this return? The second one. What will that return? Int. An integer, right? You see that the, they're the same names, it's the same thing, but they have different behavior. And the right one will get called depending on the arguments you give it. Clear? What is this called? John, go. You can do this. So he's asking, can you give it a Boolean? Well, yeah, if you have another one, hang on. If you have another one that says you can give it a boolean, 
Range. Can you cast from Boolean to a number? A double. What about it? You're right. Okay, fine. Let me give you this example to make it crystal clear. You have two. One takes a Boolean, A, and it returns a Boolean, which is, say, the opposite of A. You then have another thing with the same exact name, but that takes two numbers and adds them together. This should completely different behavior, right? One takes a Boolean and returns a Boolean. One takes two numbers and returns their sum. You can, so you can't go, for, unless you, okay, so you can do that, but you have to cast. So the very first day, remember we did this. So if we have a uh, double A, which, oh, not A, double Z, which has in it 4.5, then we, we have an int foo. We can't do this, right? Because you can't put 4.5 into something that doesn't support 0.5. Right? But what we can do is we can cast, sorry, cast like that. What will this do? Exactly, it'll take the four. So casting means like transforming one type to another. So how would you transform this to an integer? Well, you just get rid of this and you end up with a four. So foo just takes a four. But here's the interesting part. Watch this. Going the other way around is okay, because you don't lose anything. Watch, suppose I have an int of you know, f1 that has a four, and then I have a double of f2 that takes an f1. No errors. Why? Yeah, because a double takes, like there's nothing that you're losing by putting your int into a double. But if you put your, int into, your double into an int, you're losing precision. Right? You're losing the decimal. So Java forces you to say, okay, you can do this, but make sure you know what you're doing and prove it to me by showing it. Say, yes, I am actually casting to an int. It'll say, okay, fine, and it'll make the cast. Uh, hang on, I got lots of questions. So let's start from here and move up. Go. Uh huh. is a cast on int. Heto int is dead doubly. Chores get the abrus. I think in chores. Go. Which? Like the name is the same. Ah, you're talking about this stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. With different arguments? You, you mean, yeah, I see what you're saying. You can just say, look, why can't I just name them differently. Why do I have to have the same name for all of them? It, it can be confusing, you're right. But suppose, suppose the behavior is the same. So, an example. Addition. Probably, yeah, addition, right? So you might say like, add. You're adding in all cases, right? You understand? Okay, good. Uh, other questions? Yes. Yeah, ha, ah. ha, ah. a double plus an int, yeah, so look. So he's asking this, imagine this was a, this, I want to return a double here, and this was a double, but the other one was not. If I then add these two up, they, I will yield a double. Ha, 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 chorsa, automatic double, chorsa double, waki karas matatsas, wurpes chors get zero. That's in good, ha. Okay, uh, yes, go. What if we have two functions which take the same number of arguments with the same thing? You can't do that. Then you, have then you have duplication in your code, which makes no sense. Yeah, okay. Uh, go. So four passes for a double? Okay, Musa Bully and Avesnum at Hastachi. 
հատեղ որ մեկը կտրի այս այդ հետարքին հարցա որտե 4-ը կարա համ ընդ it depends on what container you put it in right um, good question. we have to experiment we'll just do both and see Okay, other questions? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. The main thing that, that really changes is the arguments, right? Because that's how you determine, right? Depending on what you pass it. If you have the same arguments but different return types, that's a problem because how does it know which to call? It doesn't. So that's a problem. You get it? So it's the arguments that determine the differences. Jokes? Ha raise your hands if you don't know what method overloading is. Nice. All right, good. By the way, can we do method overloading in JavaScript? So the answer is yes or no. So you c the answer is no because you can't have two functions with the same name. But the answer is yes because remember in JavaScript you don't have to spec call every variable. So you can say, I can take an arbitrary number of variables, and then in your code, check which variables are there, and have different behavior, basically with an if statement. And say, if the value I got is a number, do this, else if the value I got is a string, do that. So you can kind of do the same thing with JavaScript. Yes? Yeah? Good. Okay. All right. So we know method overloading. Awesome. We know methods. We know members. Okay. One final thing before we move forward with all the other awesomeness we're going to learn, and that's constructors. What is a constructor? A constructor is just a function that is called to initialize your object. So what's an example? Well, let's do public person. Notice how it does not have a return type. The reason why it does not have a return type is because its return type is the constructed object. This is not a regular function, so don't confuse it with something like, you know, public int foo. Okay? It's not the same thing. This is a constructor. What, how do we use a constructor? Well, let's go back to this other file. Have a, ooh, hang on. Have a look at this. Do you see a constructor here? Look at this. Person with that call. Wait, let's go back here. Do you see this? Oh, 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 hang on. You don't see it. This? Let me put it up at the top so it's easier. One sec. You see this? You see that? See it again. See that? You see that? OK, so what this means is that we are using this function to construct or to create a person. So what we can do here, what do I mean by initialization? Does anyone remember what initializing something means? Yeah, giving initial value, setting it up, yeah, getting it ready. OK, so one thing we might do in our constructor is maybe set up the initial values for name and last name. So we can do something like this. This dot f name is you, I don't know. And this dot l name is we, whatever. We, Mr. We. Wait, l, oh, sorry, l name. Ah, bye. Yeah, I knew that. I know how to program. <laughs> All right. Good. OK, so now if we go back to here and we don't do this, and we just do system.out.println.pfname, what do you suppose I will get? You. you. Look, because in my constructor, I set fname to you. So here, when I call this, it goes into here. It sets f name and l name, and then p already has an f name and n name. F name, l name. OK, let me say this again. This calls this. This then does that and that, 
and then the resulting object gets returned and put into P. So now P has U and we inside. Go. Wait 30 seconds and you'll see yes. Yes. So just as any other function, listen, just like any other function, we can pass parameters to our constructor. So we can do this. Person P2 is new person, which is uh, Joe Schmo. Why is this not working? Why is it all red? Because person does not take arguments. Why don't we create another constructor that does? So let's have it take string f name and string l name. And then here, let's do this dot f name is l na for f name. And then this dot l name is l name. You notice why this is important now. Because this refers to this, but this refers to that. Understand? This f name is just a parameter to my function. This f name refers to my f name. Notice this is basically overloading. I am overloading my constructor. It has the same name, but the parameters are different. And so I have two different constructors. So now I can have my second one. Eh? There we go. So now here, if I do system.out.p, hang on, p2, what will I get in my console now? What will this print? You. Right? Look, this will call person, which is this one. It will set f name to you, therefore when I print f name, it's going to print you. Right? For this one, I call person with two strings. That means it goes into this one, this function here. It sets my first string to f name, the second string to l name, and because the first string I passed was Joe, f name is going to be Joe. So I get you here and Joe here. Go. Yeah. So, so one of the things you have no, you will notice is that the name of the constructor is exactly the same as the name of the class. Yet another rule. Okay, yes it is required, you have to do it that way. So the name of the file, the name of the class, and the name of the constructor are the same. Yes? How, I, how does it know from the other thing that... So this is a template for how to make a person, right? Then here, I create a person by calling its constructor. Here I pass no parameters, so, so it goes to this one, which has no parameters. Wait, wait, guys, chime in this room. How does it know what? Ah, okay. So where does it, how does it get this? Because it's written in a separate file, is that what you're asking? Ah, okay. So we'll talk about how this works, the mechanism, that it works very soon. Actually, that's the next thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now. But the simple answer right now is they're both in the same directory, and if classes are in the same directory, they see each other. Yeah, of course not. It, well, think of it this way. If the name of the class is the name of the file, can you, in your file system, have two files in the same directory with the same name? You know, you can't, right? So, logically, no. Go. Okay, a constructor is a function that initializes your object. That sets up your object. Okay, it's a function that gets called right away when your object is created or constructed. Got it? Go. And the new person constructor 
Ja, ja. No, 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 no. But the Gaunt has constructoring. Constructor of Gaunt has constructoring. Person dot person. Ha, you're talking about the package stuff? Person dot per. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You're jumping ahead. You're kind of close to what the reality is, but we'll get there later. Does anyone not understand constructors? Everybody understands constructors. We can do a quiz right now, no problem. No, no. why? If you either understand it or you don't, do you understand it? Understanding and remembering the syntax is not. Yeah, I'm not good. Okay. If I were to show you code and say we, we're calling person or we're calling person string string, would you know which constructor each of those calls? Yes. Yes? John, very cool. I like this. We're getting back into that flow where you're understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> this is good. This is very good. Okay, so look, guys. Remember, every time we want to make an object, we have to make a class. That means, hey, that means that over time, you're going to end up with lots and lots and lots of classes hundreds, maybe thousands of classes. Putting all of these classes into one massive directory is probably not a good idea. It's not a good way of organizing your code. Would you agree? Okay. So what we have in Java is the ability to make directories. Ta-da! So let's make a directory. Uh, where's a directory? Direct folder. Directory. It's the same thing. And let's call it uh, test. Notice I made a directory called test. I can now into test put in a class. Let me go ahead and add a file called animal.java. Okay, we now have animal.java. Okay, so one thing you have to do. So we know we made animal.java. We know that we have to make a class, public class animal, fine. The other thing that we have to do, pay attention to this, directories in Java are no, or directories that contain classes in Java are known as packages. Don't get confused. Anytime you hear the word package in Java, it just means the directory. That's it. Okay? Package is a directory. So we have to, whenever we create a class, say, first of all, what package it's in. Well, the name of the directory that it's in is called test. What is the name of the package? Thank you. Ta-da! Okay, so we've now made a class that is inside of our test package. Clear? Go. Chikidam. Zevat Ensa. Just spazi. Okay. Is this. Go. Right, okay. Hang on. Okay, so now let's use animal inside of here. So let's notice how we just did new person, right? So let's just as easily do new animal. Da 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 It's red. Why is it red? Well, what does it say? Cannot resolve to a type. Resolve means find. It's saying, I don't know what animal is. No, it doesn't know. It can't find the file. It doesn't know where it is. So I have to tell it. I can do one of two things. I can either do test dot, oh, test dot, animal and now it knows to go into this package and use that class. The other thing I can do is instead of doing that is I can import. Up here I can write import test.animal and now it knows, I'll, I'll show you why you would use one over the other. And now it knows that, okay, it knows about animal, so later when it sees animal, it knows that it's that. Understand? Okay. So 
question. Suppose animal was not in test, but it was in test slash foo slash bar. What would be the name of the package? Test dot foo dot bar dot animal. Well, package would be that, and then dot animal would be the class. Just gotta only down. Make sense? Oh, you had a question. Ha, huh. so suppose, okay, so now let's make a more complex one. Let's inside of test, no, 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 relative to your project. So this is the base, so test is the package. If I put another directory here, uh, new directory, uh, test two, or let's call it foo. And then let me move animal to foo. So now, what is the package that animal is in? You see why? Inside of test I have foo, inside of foo I have animal, therefore the package is test.foo. Got it? So that means when I go back to my other file, here I have to do test.foo, uh, foo.animal. Okay. A question was asked, what's better, to do an import or to just do this? Let me explain the difference. This has to then go into a variable, right? What is the type of the variable? What, what is the type for A? Sorry, not, yeah, A. Animal. Can I just write animal? No. It doesn't, exactly, because here I said this specific one, so that means I have to do this again. And so the code blows up, right? The code becomes much bigger because I have to put this full path every time. So it's optimal to just do the import one time, import, and then here I can just use animal everywhere. So if this is the case, question for you. If it's the case that I can always just import, why does Java even allow the other syntax? Why, does, why do I have this option of putting it right here? Because you may be in different scope. Okay, go. Tell me as kids. Exactly. Look. You can't have the same file in the same directory. We know this, yes? But you can have the same named file in two different directories, right? So imagine I had animal in another package called, suppose I have, I have animal, here, let's not suppose, let's do it. Let's copy this and put it into test. Now this one just has test. Eh? Moment. Oh, this one is in. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. This one is this one. Test.foo. This one is under test. So this one is just test. Okay. So now I have two animal classes. As you can see, this animal class is under test. This animal class is under foo. Right? No, if you put them in the same, you can't put the same, right? You can't have the same file with the same name in the same directory. That, you can't do that. So in this case, but you can do this. You can have the same named class in two different places. Okay, so now in this case, how do I differentiate when I'm using them between this one and this one? See, there's a problem. It's saying, well, they're both animal and there's a collision. So in this case, I would do explicitly, I would say, let's use this one here. And then let's use this one. Huh? Ha, ha, yeah, you, so you can, I think you can do this, yeah. So you can do... Uh, I suggest you don't because you're going to get confused. Wait, which one was the, but fine, import. And then now you can use animal. There. So now in this case, yes, this will assume this one, and then this explicit one will assume the one inside. So yes. Yeah. 
Okay, does that, now you might be asking yourselves, why on earth would I ever name two classes the same? Well, if you recall, one of the cool things about you writing code is using other people's code, right? So you will bring in packages, you know what a package is now, packages that have been written by other people, libraries, open source projects, whatever, right? And there is no guarantee that they always used classes that are different from yours. Sometimes they might name something the same. Understand? So you might end up with this problem and this is the solution. Got it? Yes? Questions? Good. Okay, so now that we understand this idea that we can put classes in different places, before I continue, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How many people are confused? Okay, two brave souls, three, four brave souls, five, six, seven, so eight, that's, that's it, eight out of, to be fair, today it's not really 120. By the way, where is my 120? Midterms. Fine. Yeah, we're actually quite a bit larger than that one. Okay. All right, question. One of you who is confused, raise your hand and tell me exactly what you're confused about. And don't say... <laughs> all that about creating packages. Okay, I'll, do the, I'll show you this one more time because it's super simple. A package, oh, a package is a directory. You can put your classes in different directories. Is that clear? When you put your class inside of a directory like test foo, the name of the package is test.foo. Right, because you're under test, under foo, under test.foo, yes? So when you make it, in addition to doing what we always do, you say the package name. You know what? Fine. Let, let's, let's ask Google. Hang on. Uh, yeah, but I don't know everything, so... <laughs> oh, snap. Rube doesn't know everything. Why does Java force me to specify package name? Why does Eclipse insist on package name for net? No, possible use to two Java classes, same name. Naming a package. Oops, community package Okay, whatever. I don't, want to, I don't want you guys to watch me Google. So instead, here's one. You Google and then post your answer on our Facebook page, please. The eight people who raised their hand. All of you. But anyway, but for now, just assume, yes, you have to specify the package name when you create it. But is that okay? Yeah, that's clear? Okay, good. Now that you know that, then you can use it by saying where animal is, well, it's inside of this package, and this is a class, and then you can use it. You can also say the package name when you're using it. Yes or no? What is this? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, good, okay. All right, so let's keep going. We have a few more things to cover and then we'll, we can just review and stuff. All right, now that we understand this. Huh? Zoom out. Zoom out. Okay, good. Now that we understood this, watch. Let's do a few more things. Let's go back to person. Wait, animal. Uh, let's do this animal. Uh.
Okay, watch. Give me some characteristics that an animal can have. Okay, I, an animal can have a name, I suppose. Sure. Okay, okay. You're an animal, you know that, right? Just, just to be clear, we are animals. So we don't really have owners. Uh, public, I hope not. <laughs> uh, int age. Favorite food. Yeah, but that's a list, isn't it? Or unless you have one favorite. You want to have one favorite? Oh, we like steak and we like burgers. Um, okay. Huh? T type? Oh, how about, uh, do animals, are all animals, uh, do they all have male and female? Can you name an animal that does not have a male or female? Exactly, so we can't do that. We can do sexuality, asexual or sexual, right? Ones that have it, ones that don't. At a university, I shouldn't be saying this stuff. All right, let's give that one, another one. OMG, there's the queen and there's, all right, whatever. This is fine, this is fine, really, it's fine. Good, we have a, we have a name and we have an age. Uh, by the way, there's a problem with age. What is our, uh, is it year? Because there are plenty of animals who live like a couple of days, right? So maybe we should do seconds. And then you can multiply it out. If it's a string? Yeah, but then we can't do like math against it. Well, you have to turn it into a number and then do math. Yeah, but why not just store it as math? As a, sorry, as a number. Okay, guys. The number of seconds can get rather large, right? So we might want to even store it as a long because it's going to be potentially very big, right? Okay, so good. So we have these two things and they're public. Notice how it says public next to them. Pay attention to this. So now here I can say z2 dot age is whatever and z2 dot name is whatever. I can then do system.out.println z2.name. Right? Did I do anything weird here? Is there anything you did not understand? I have an animal that has these two members. I then refer to these members by modifying them and then reading name back out. Anyone confused about what I just did? Okay, now watch this. I go to animal and I change this to private. <laughs> Notice what the error says. What does the error say? It's not visible. So this controls access, visibility. Right, so private is only available inside of code that begins here and ends here. In other words, it's only available inside of your class. So question, how could I reveal name to the outside world if name is private? Okay so, so okay, so one thing I could do is I could have another one that's public, uh, I don't know, string foo, and then maybe copy using my constructor maybe this value into this value. Okay, but then if, I, if this modifies, this stays old, right? So maybe not the best way. What's another way? What if I had a public function like uh, string get name? I want to now return this dot name. Can I do this? 
Yes, because this is written between here and here. So I can refer to. I'll tell you. It's too. Pri okay, so you might be asking yourselves why make things private? It's to protect data. Let me give you an example. Suppose you want to say you have a string and you want that string to be, let's use that example, whether something is sexual or asexual. Let's say it's a string. And the value is either going, oh my god, grow up. And the value is either going to be sexual or asexual. Yes? With me? But now suppose that variable is public and someone does dot whatever, the name of the variable, equals hello. What the crap is hello? It's supposed to be either sexual or asexual. What is hello? Right? So they've corrupted your data. They screwed it up. One way you can make sure that does not happen is by having a method like set whatever. And then when they give you the value, you can check is the value one of these things. What's another one? Suppose you have age. Can people live to 300 right, years old right now? Right now, oh, of course, really? <laughs> grow, grow up. Can we as humans live to 300 years old? No. no. So, but if you made it public, someone could just come and do dot age equals 3,000 years old. Right? They've now corrupted your data. So, but if you had a method like set age, where they give you the age, you can have if statements like is the given age of a, can age be negative 10? Can you be negative 3,000 years old? No. But is negative 3,000 an integer? Yes. 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 So they could, if it's public, do h equals negative 3,000, right? So yeah, you, okay, hang on. So one thing you can do, I'm just giving you an example. You can do tricks, but just as an example. Here you would do something like public uh, void set h. You take along. And you check to see if a is greater than 0, or greater than or equal to, maybe they were just born, and a is less than, say, 300, then and only then do you do this dot h is a. Does that make sense? So you keep your data typically private. Then you have methods, functions. Yeah, whatever. Work with me. Yes, fine. Whatever. Okay, so just multiply that by however many seconds in a year and blah blah. Okay. So, you understand so you have methods and you have members. Typically, members are private. Typically. And if you want to access your members to modify them or to read them, you have methods. You have functions. And the reason why you go through this method of indirection is for validation. Right? Typically, is to protect your data from someone just doing dot h equals something random. Got it? How does it protect the data? Does it encrypt it or? I just protected it. Look. I mean, How do you modify age? Can you modify age? Like if you uh, declare it private. Yeah. What does it do underneath? Like it encrypts the variable name? No. You just. Oh, how does it actual JVM? I don't know. I don't know. But you can't read this from anywhere outside of that and that. Got it? So it's so private means it's only visible inside of your class. What do you suppose public means? It's visible everywhere. Visible everywhere. From everywhere. Absolutely. Good. Yes, go. No. You can only refer to this from any code inside of this and that. Only, only inside of here. If you want to refer to it, you can either create a public method that you can use to modify it or make it public. Make sense? Go. You don't have to. But it's highly advisable to have setters and getters for your private variables. So typically, when you guys read like production code, you will very often see something like this. For every like set of members, like name and age, you will see something like this. 
public string get name. You will see another one called like public void set name. And then you'll see another one for age and so on and so forth. And then over time you will fill in logic to do validation and do all kinds of trickery in your getters and your setters. So when you declare a private variable you have to also create You don't have to, no. You can just keep a private variable that only you see. But if you want the world to modify it or the world to read it, so create a key function. A what function? A key like uh, a logic a statement to access a private variable. Well, that's what that is. It's, it's in Java, Java, it's called getters and setters. Why? Because you call set whatever, get something. By the way, you don't have to call it get name. You can call it foo and you call it bar. But conventions tells us that if you want to create a setter for name and a getter for name, you do set name, get name. Just as a convention. Why void? Does it return anything? No, so it's void. Yeah, but it's not return. This says what it returns. Got it? What does this return? Name, which is a string, therefore string. Yeah, this allows you to read name by calling this method. And this says that this function can be referenced outside of the class. It's now public. If statement is legal Exactly. Control is public public control Go. Good. Okay. So now that we understand packages, protected, it's not used that often, but there is another thing you can use called protected. What that means is that any class can reference that that is in the same directory. Let me say, Jogesh. So in the side of a directory, you have classes, right? If you have something that is protected, it can be referred to by any of those classes, but nothing outside of that directory. So it's private to the directory. Got it? Miatelka called pack, uh, in charge, package, it's protected. It's the one where you don't say anything, it's a default. That has to do, it's almost like protected, but it also has something to do with inheritance. We haven't studied inheritance, so don't worry about it for now. But it's basically, but typically in programming, you use public and private. Protected and the default is very rarely used. Other questions? So is the question, how do you make something constant? Yeah, so you can make another one called, say, private final string foo is yay. You can also make it public, actually, it doesn't matter. But if you make it public, they can read it. If you make it private, they can't even read it. And nobody can modify it. It can't, no? Or is it server? No, they can't. Final means no one can change it. You can't change it, they can't change it. Okay, final, wait. Final means nobody can change it. So, Voch means no, final, that's it. You can copy it to another variable that is not final and then change it, but you can't change it. Public and private just means who can see it. So if you do public, final, whatever, they can read it, but they can't change it. If you do private, they can't see it and they can't change it. Incha, won't. The private, no, the constructor cannot be private by definition because it's used by external things to make the class.
Now, because the constructor is used by other things to make your, an instance of your class. So they have to see it, otherwise they can't use it. Okay, good. All right, guys. I want to try to understand. Am I going too fast? Raise your, seriously? No. Wait, raise your hands if you think I'm going too fast. No. One, two, three. Okay, so most people think I'm going just right. Fine, good. For those of you, huh? This is more on the fast side than the slow side. OK, but yeah, it's me. Of course, that's the case. But is it so fast that you, is it so fast that you can't keep up? No. Have you, raise your hands if you're doing solo learn. What? The homework. Solo learn, the homework. OK. If you are confused with what I'm talking about, go back to solo learn and keep going. Do as much as you can. Go th up through module five. It's, it, OK, Code Academy is fantastic, but y if you want the full thing, you have to pay for it. If you want to pay for it, please do. Go ahead. I just don't want to add more costs to you. So I don't care. Whatever. Just do one of those things and learn Java. Um, so after this homework, which is due today, from now on, it's going to be like Java, 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 Java. So yeah. Uh, questions? No questions. Good, let's take a photo. Arsok of Karen! Hey! Jan! Merci.